Hello everybody and welcome to your next C++ MIDI ZHD tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about vectors. So uh, before we get started, vectors, uh, they often scare a lot of people. The syntax scares people, the name of it scares people, and some people just can't grasp it. But I can guarantee by the end of this tutorial you'll be able to grasp the concept of vectors. And if you ever have questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment below or post on the forum on my website. So what is a vector? A vector, uh, for those of you who don't know, is basically a resizable array. So you can expand it, you can make it smaller, do certain stuff. So it's like a dynamic resizable array. And they're not meant to replace arrays. Sometimes arrays are better than vectors. But once you get the hang of vectors, you're going to start using arrays most likely less and less because vectors in most cases are more efficient than arrays, right? Uh, so this is a very important tutorial and vectors are a very important concept to learn. So do not ignore this tutorial if you don't know vectors or if you don't know fully inside and out. So in order to use a vector, we have to include the vector class. And one thing to note is that a vector is part of the STD namespace, okay? So whenever you call anything with a vector, you have to do STD colon colon. Or if you're using namespace STD, then you don't need to um, do that. But I'm not a fan of that, so I'm going to be using STD colon colon. So uh, to, to the syntax of a vector is kind of like when we learned about templates and I believe classes. And uh, what we do is we say vector, we put a left stream operator, the type of vector is going to be, and then the name of it. So let's say, let's call it numbers. So think of an array like this. When we create an array, we say, sorry, we say int uh, the array type or whatever, and then we put how much elements or whatever we want in it, right? So the vector we call vector, then in the left stream operators and right stream operators, we put the type, then we put the number and uh, we put the name of our variable okay so that might get a uh, might take some time to get used to but it's kind of like templates how we uh, call templates and such okay so right now our vector has nothing in it right we have to be able to store values in it now one thing to note about vectors is that we can define a size of the vector right like a fixed size just like arrays but that will be for another tutorial uh, for this tutorial, we're not going to be setting a fixed size. Right now, we're going to be dynamic, dynamically resizing the vector uh, so we can do stuff with it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to call the pushback function. And, put, and when you open it like this, we're going to see a lot of uh, value. We're going to see this long thing in here, right? This might confuse you, might scare you, don't worry about it. It just means input an integer type value, okay? So let's put 20, okay? Uh, so once we do that, what it does is that right now, let's say, let's look at it as an array, okay? So in the array, we have a temporary. So right now, our vector, before we called numbers.pushback, our vector, our array was had zero elements in it, okay? So now when we call pushback, what it basically says is that it says create a new element, and in that new element, store the value that we put in the parameters. So it would say that temporary one would be equal to 20. So let's say that, uh, uh, we wanted to add another value, okay? So we'd call numbers and let me erase that. So right now numbers has numbers contains and uh, it contains one element, right? Number zero, right? Because we have one element in it. So if I was to call numbers push back and I said 10, sorry, then numbers zero would be equal to 20 and numbers one would be equal to 10. Okay. So if we look at it from a race perspective, what it does is that it creates a brand new element. Then within that element, it stores the value that we put in the parentheses. Okay. So that's what pushback does. It creates a brand new element and adds a value to it. Not that complicated, right? So just to prove what I'm saying is correct. Uh, let's, call the cout statement 
Now to access an element within a vector is just like accessing it in an array. So if I want to access the first element, I just call numbers zero, okay? And I call end L and let's run this program just to see what we get. So we get the value 20. So we stored the value 20 in the uh, index zero and so on and so forth, right? Uh, to also, if you want to access it, like if you don't want to access it like an array, maybe it confuses you or something like that. You can always put dot at, and you can specify which element that you want to uh, put the array, uh, put the the value that you actually want to get, right? So um, just to uh, add values like this, this is not the only way, right? Uh, say for example, we want to change this value, right? We push back 20, but say you want to change the value It would be kind of stupid if we weren't able to change the value So much like a raise we can take it it's number zero and we can change it to whatever value you want to So in this case, we're gonna change the first element first We assigned it the value 20, but we didn't like the value 20 So now we're gonna change the first elements value to 15 So if I call number zero or I'll use an alternate method just so you guys can see it so uh, the number number zero, we're gonna run that and we should get the value 15. So we get the value 15 in the console window. So much like a raise, we can change the value of an element that we created, right? The difference with this is that we can create as many elements as we want. We don't have to predefine it, and sorry for that. We don't have to predefine the elements. The elements are created. Uh, the elements are created as we call pushback, right? So we can create as many different elements as we need to create. Now let's say that uh, we created these two, right? But we didn't want. We want to get rid of the this number right here, right? We want to get rid of the top number. What we could do is call numbers. Sorry, called numbers dot pop back, and uh, what and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call C out numbers one. Now let's see what happens. We get an error, right? Uh, the reason why we get an error is because when we call pop back. What it does is it takes the last number, the highest number within that array or within that vector, right? So since we have a vector of two, right, then that means we have numbers, we have numbers zero, and we have numbers one, okay? So what popback does is that since this is the highest element, so the last element that we actually created, it will delete that element. So now we don't have a numbers one anymore. All we're left with is numbers zero. So once we called, uh, once we said C out numbers one, it didn't exist anymore because we called the popback function, which in turn deleted it. So if you wanted to delete the the utmost, uh, the the last the last element that you actually inserted, then you can also you can do that by calling numbers dot pop back and nothing goes in the parameters. You just call it and it will delete it like so. OK, so with that method, we have dynamically resized it by increasing it. And by calling numbers dot pop back, we can decrease the size of it dynamically. So it's a resizable array in that we can increase its size or decrease its size. And in the next few tutorials, we're going to be learning more about vectors, how to set a fixed size, and uh, we're going to learn about deleting elements like in the middle, right? So, for example, if popback, popback only really um, deletes the one that was recently created, right? But say we wanted to delete an element in the middle, right? Uh, it is possible, uh, but there is better ways. There's better container classes and better um, things to use to delete if you need to d be able to delete stuff in the center. But I will be showing you how to delete uh, elements in the middle of a vector to make life easier uh, just for you guys. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. So thanks for watching and bye.